thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for your contributions uh, and your interventions. Um, Christos, in a minute, is, about, is going to give you the piece of information that I know many of you are particularly keen to have, which is what the totality of your pledges um, today add up to. But I want to say that we're very pleased with the outcome um, on behalf of the United Nations. We want to thank you for your generosity. Your support will help to save millions of lives and protect civilians across Syria and across the region. We did hear from many statements today a strong call for unimpeded, sustainable access in all areas of Syria to assist the most vulnerable people. And on behalf of the United Nations, I promise to you that we will do everything within our power to achieve exactly that. While life-saving interventions do need to be reinforced, and what you have pledged will enable us to do that, to ensure an adequate response to individuals and communities, um, it is also the case that um, most people in Syria are now living further away from areas of armed conflict, and we need to evolve our support for those people to put a stronger focus on resilience um, for the future. And again, many of you in your pledges will enable us to do that. I want once more to reinforce our thanks to the host countries that who for nearly nine years now, nearly nine years, have been so generous in hosting Syrian refugees, offering asylum and protection, opening up public services, enabling more and more refugees to participate in the local economy. Thank you in particular to Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq and Egypt, where the vast preponderance of Syrian refugees um, have gone. We heard what you said today about your top priorities. Above all, that you need adequate multi-year funding, both for Syrian refugees and for host communities, and you need support for your economies as you bear this burden. We heard today from many of you that conditions are not yet conducive for large-scale returns of refugees from Syria. But we also heard the need to support those people who are voluntarily, currently in small numbers, but nevertheless, um, some people are doing this, returning. And we also heard the importance of facilitating the removal of the obstacles which are preventing other people at this stage from returning. In addition to the money that's been raised today, um, the conference has sent a powerful signal of the solidarity that the international community expresses to Syria. Uh, we also heard clearly in your statements today that humanitarian assistance, while it saves lives and reduces suffering, cannot solve the crisis in Syria, and we agree with that. So, as many of you have said, ending this crisis requires a political solution. We all hope to see important progress in this regard over the next few months, and we thank you for the support you've expressed for the work um, of the new Special Envoy, my colleague Gare Pedersen. Ultimately, only a sustainable peace can offer the chance of stability and prosperity that all Syrians deserve. Christos, I now hand over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mark. Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear friends, the third uh, Brussels conference on the future of Syria has come to an end. And uh, I also would like to say a big thank to my dear colleague, Mark Lowcock, Filippo Grandi, Special Envoy, Pedersen, and for the, uh, our colleagues for the UN for uh, their collaboration to organize this really very valuable conference. Of course, I would like to say a big thank to the European Union services, to my, my colleagues for their uh, excellent work. Uh, without them, I'm sure that we cannot deliver this, uh, uh, all this complicated situation for this conference. Uh, but first of all, after two intense days of dialogue, with our humanitarian partners, produce valuable contributions and concrete recommendations that will be translated into life-changing actions on the ground. So, and today, 
a valuable day of exchanges and pledges confirm our determination to stand by those in need and, though, and those who shoulder humanitarian and recovery efforts, the authorities and the societies of Syrians' neighbors. I'm proud to announce that the delegations here today have made a collective pledge of almost five billion, seven, seven billion, sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 seven billion, I needed my glasses, <laughs> seven billion US dollar. Um, we also received pledges of uh, 2.37 billion US dollars for 2020 and beyond. The European Union as a whole, EU and EU member states, has pledged for 2019, 2020 and beyond uh, 6.75 billion euros, more than two uh, out of three today's pledges. 230, yeah. 230 yes. And... Uh, I would like to thank sincerely all delegations and donor representatives for living up to their commitments for delivering on their promises. I would like also to thank for the record-breaking funding, for the record-breaking solidarity. Dear colleagues, now is the time to move fast, to translate these pledges into action on the ground to make the most out of this funding in an effective and transparent way, in the best interest of the most vulnerable Syrians, wherever they are. It's our turn to also show solidarity to all those who show concrete, tangible solidarity every day in Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, as well as Iraq and Egypt. Dear colleagues, today we are sending a strong message to the people of Syria. Today we are also sending a strong message to the world. A stable, democratic and prosperous Syria is possible through a peaceful and inclusive political solution. This should guide our common political recovery and humanitarian efforts. We must secure a better future for the people of Syria. We owe it to this generation of Syrians who suffer unfairly. And of course, the generation of Syrians to come. And I strongly believe we owe it to the future of Syria, to the stability and the prosperity of the whole region. Thank you so much for your presence and thank you so much for your pledges.